This news with John Johnson for Ernie Anastas, Ellen Fleischer for Roseanne Scamardella, Mike Barry with Sports, Storm Field with the weather, and the Eyewitness News team. Good evening. We're coming off the bloodiest year in the history of New York, 1,784 homicides. And we're starting off the new year with at least 10 murders in the city today. Tonight, Brooklyn police are looking for a man who may have stabbed his mother and her girlfriend to death. The bodies of the two women were found in a home on Pacific Street. Police say both bodies had multiple stab wounds. Jane Wallace has more on the record murder rate of 1980. You've probably <laughs> forgotten the first murder of 1980, that is, if you ever heard of him. He was 46-year-old Otis Tysdall, killed coming home from a New Year's Eve party only an hour and 45 minutes into the year. There are other murders this year you'll probably remember more easily. John Lennon shot by a strange fan. Allard Lowenstein by a man once his friend. Herman Tarnauer by a lover. Helen Mintix murdered at the Met, a stagehand accused. 10-year-old Lorraine Pacifico, her teenage neighbor arrested. Stephen Schweikert, the honor student, attacked randomly. Carol Gerlandi stabbed in her hospital bed. The East Side Slasher, who killed one, still loose. The Midtown Slasher, who killed four, also at large. And all these people together only add up to less than the average three-day murder toll in New York. The 1980 spree ended with Lawrence Hatoff, the second of two dry cleaners murdered in its final week. He's another statistic now. And the statistics this year are really grim. Every day in New York State, six people are murdered, and five of those, count them, five, are murdered right here in New York City. The total, the record number for the year, 1,787 people killed through someone else's design. According to New York State figures, 55% of our murderers are using guns, another 25% knives. Only 9% of the arrested murderers are women, although 20% of their victims are female. But none of these numbers tell us the why. Because there's uh, too few cops and there's too many guns in the city of New York. Our criminal justice system is probably at its weakest point it's ever been. See, people are uptight, you know. It's an uptight situation we're in, it seems, you know, with the economy and things the way it's going. So people, the temples are very short. There's definitely a lot more guns on the street, and uh, that's probably it. The gun laws, the, uh, the courts, the way they're letting people out, it's, you know, it's just like that all the time. It's going to be a lot more killings, too. The New York preliminary murder rate that released today is 700 more than Los Angeles and twice that of Chicago. Whatever the real reason is why, 1981 is less than 24 hours old and another nine people have been killed. It makes you feel very helpless. And not a single person is in jail for any of the 13 murders committed this day a year ago in 1980. The first murder of that year, by the way, Otis Tysdall, has never been solved. John? Well, Jane, at least no major crime problems last night in Times Square where thousands pushed, shoved, and yelled in the new year. Police had the situation well under control as we hear from John Slattery. The sounds of silence. Well, almost. Certainly the quietest you'll ever find Times Square. About the only activity this morning, workmen picking up the remnants from the night before. Workmen who couldn't believe the stillness. Looks like a ghost town. The ghost towns. It's the quietest I've ever seen in New York. Yes, this scene is all quite a contrast from last night when Times Square was nothing like this. <laughs> Times Square was mobbed with people. Police say 350 to 400,000. At two minutes before midnight, the lighted ball above one Times Square went dark for one minute to observe the American hostages being held in Iran. Then, at a minute before midnight, the ball began its 60-second countdown while the crowd of revelers sang Auld Lang Syne and threw makeshift confetti. The crowd was smaller than last year's, probably because of the cold. To patrol the mob, police added 35% more police than last year, putting 1,200 officers at the scene. Police say it worked. We did not have any reports of uh, civilian injuries uh, reported to us. So we were very happy about that. We thought last year was successful. Uh, this year appeared to be even more successful. I guess. What was it that helped keep everything so orderly? Not just the added police, but giving the police mobility. And this is what did it, specially laid out police lines. 
Police say there was no problem with the roving gangs who used to prey on the crowd because for the second year in a row, police set up narrow police corridors running from 43rd all the way up to 52nd Street, open lanes so cops could move about freely. Gave us the mobility to go in uh, to the crowd, break the crowd uh, in uh, uh, segments, uh, able to move up and down the street. When an arrest was made to bring the prisoner through the uh, uh, mass of people, it worked out very well. And, uh, we think that's going to continue and be an annual event. While no civilians were hurt, three cops were injured. One of them slashed with a knife while trying to stop a man wielding a bottle, a man who was then shot and wounded by police. Also, transit police dogs came into play, helping to arrest two suspected muggers. John Slattery, Channel 7 Eyewitness News.